Next up is um, Street Bees. Towards the, uh, you're gonna use the clicker towards the audio booth back there. Take it away. Hi, Hi everyone, this is Tuche. I'm the CEO and founder of Street Bees. Street Bees is the world's intelligence platform funded eight months ago and generated $150,000 from Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Unilever, Ferrero, Nespresso, it's a long list. So what was it that got the giants of the consumer industry so excited about this, con this new intelligence solution? Right, let's come on back. As you know, for consumer brands, it's very important to understand their consumers intrinsically. They need to see how their products are being used, how people engage with these products within its context. They also need to see how their products are being sold in the stores. For example, Lindt, a chocolate brand, did not know that their chocolates in India were actually locked in a drawer and you can't see them, you have to ask them by name. That explains why they were not selling well in India. The current data solutions are quite clunky, they are slow, it takes two to four weeks to get the data. They are quite patchy. If you want 20 countries, 30 countries covered in one research, you are looking to work with 10 different agencies for that, which again causes reliability issues with data and makes it really expensive. If Coca-Cola wants to talk to their consumers and understand, for example, what snacks they eat when they are drinking Coke in Kazakhstan, or see how they are, if their new Coca-Cola Zero product is in stock in Azerbaijan, they need to work with all these agencies you see in between, which makes the slow process very slow and also quite expensive. And that's exactly the problem Street Biz is solving by disintermediating all these agencies in between and connecting Coca-Cola straight with their consumer or their sales points in real time, anywhere in the world. So how do we do that? We have geolocation technology which allows us to direct the questions to the right people in the right place at the right time. Let me run you, uh, run you through an example. So we are currently working with Pepsi and they want to derive sales of Cheetos. They need to see in 20 different countries what people are eating after dinner before sleeping time. We push this question to our community. All they need to do is take a photo after dinner of themselves, what they are eating or what they are doing at home, send it to us. We pay them five to ten dollars, depending on which country they are, for that photo instantly. We collect all that data from thousands of peoples, from dozens of cities, aggregate, qualify through our cross-verification platform and pass it on to Pepsi in real time. So this is the interesting part about the business is that we can reduce the lead time to get this information from two to four weeks, which you would get from Nielsen or Ipsos, down to 24 hours. We can deliver the results in real time, increase the quality of responses because we engage our community while saving over 50% in costs. Now the next question is, would people do this? Would people take their private photos at home, in bed or in their bathroom and share with us without all these agencies and panels in between? And the answer is yes, as you can see from these pictures. She's doing her laundry for a Unilever project. She's taking photos in Indonesia. And this is for Pepsi. She's in Egypt eating Pringles at home in bed. Or you can see a breakfast table on Sunday from Kazakhstan. The reason why they do that is because they trust us. We are always only one step away from them through our local supervisors who are on demand. And that's the secret sauce in the business. We call them super bees. We have hundreds of them in each country, in 76 countries, who can always be our touch point with the community. Our bees like the system so much so that we got 19,000 bees signed up who are active currently, which means that they took at least one project with us and we are in 76 countries now. And imagine now the power of this data coming from tens of uh, cities in real time and consumers are directly submitting their own engagement with the product or from the store while they are already in a supermarket just providing one photo and telling Coca-Cola if they are in stock or out of stock. That's exactly the reason why all these Consumer companies got so excited about this real-time intelligence that we got great traction with them. 
Now where we are is we are raising $1.5 million in our seed round. And what we are seeing is bees want more tasks and the clients and all the business world wants better data. So we are building the world's intelligence platform to be able to bring the two together. Thank you. Well done. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Brad. Are the, are the pictures critical for verification rather than just self-reporting? And do your brands really need that and, and go through the pictures? Absolutely. depends on the project. There is about 10% of our projects where photos are not critical. It's all about geolocation, um, tracking, and verifying <laughs> geolocation. We care about where they are more so than the photos. But in about 90% of the cases, when we tell Coca-Cola in that little convenience store in Kazakhstan, you are out of stock on a regular basis, do something about it, we have photos supporting that. What's the level of granularity you have on um, the demographic details of your community? And then also, how do you build your community over time? So when you become a bee, as we call it, um, you have to submit a certain level of information that includes age, gender, religion, um, income group, and also how many people live in the household. So we go to a great level of granularity. The deal we have with the bees is that that information is private and we hold it. Their names would never be attached to it. Um, how do we get the community? We never spend money on above the line or even social media marketing. It's all through super busy. It's a network marketing system. We find people in a new country that we want to go in. For example, we entered South Korea a couple of days ago. And then we first find 10 to 15 people in South Korea who are going to become the pioneers of strict bees, the ambassadors in that country. And that's very important for trust. Then they go to their circles. And also, we don't know what social media is being used there. It's not Facebook. <laughs> They know the right social media channels to work with, and they go to their friends and family, and every friends and family then go to their community, and we usually get about 2,000, 3,000 people within a matter of day or two. And we have a referral system, obviously. We pay people for referrals. So you generated $150,000 in revenue through those clients. Correct. How, how much did you deploy to the bees for that, for that revenue? Not much. We can have that conversation separately. It's, it's not uh, something that, I don't know if there's media in the room, but okay. we are trying to keep it a little bit on the um, low side, but it's, it's a fraction. Uh, and, and are you familiar with a company called Finder? Finder? Yeah. No. They do something similar worth looking up. Uh, Definitely, yeah. Selling to a different demographic. Thank you. Any other questions? Who's next? Go ahead, Alicia. Can I do one more? Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, I, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anything about backgrounds or team backgrounds. Um, is there a data scientist on board, or do you plan to have one? There is. So the team was uh, three people up until last month. Now we are 11 people. Um, it's five engineers. And uh, amongst the engineers, we also have people with systems architecture background in data science. Yeah, we also much. employed our data science, oh, yeah. who is a, a Cambridge mathematician, a couple of months ago. And we store data, it is relevant to obviously that question. We, we store data, we own the data, so we are already running a lot of callbacks to be able to reuse the data. 